Good evening. This is the night. Welcome to our Easter visual worship service. It's a joy to see you gathered on such a beautiful day. During our worship, we'll share in Holy Communion. We hope you've received the elements on your way in from the Myers. And the top part is the, the bread, and underneath is the grape juice. Uh, so during that time, we'll share in the meal together. Welcome. Welcome to worship. Tomorrow's Easter Sunday service uh, live streams at 9 a.m. And again at 11 a.m. At 11 a.m., you're welcome back to the parking lot to share in the joyous day together. We begin our service. Christ yesterday and today. Christ, the beginning and the ending. To Christ belongs all time and all the ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. God tested Abraham. Abraham. Here I am. Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, here I am, my son. The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the front of the altar, on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am. Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord. Because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. 
I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies. And by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. The word of the Lord. A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. Mortal, can these bones live? O oh Lord God, you know. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise. A rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them prophesy to the breath prophesy mortal and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, a vast multitude. Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue whose height was 60 cubits, whose width was six cubits, and he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent for the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces to assemble and come to the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, and the counselors, and the treasurers, the justices, and the magistrates, and all of the officials of the provinces assembled for the dedication of the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. 
when they were standing before the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, liar, Trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship, shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. So as soon as all of the people heard the sound of the horn, the pipe, lyre, trigon, Harp, drum, and the entire musical ensemble. All the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Accordingly, at this time, certain Chaldeans came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, liar, Trigon, harp, drum, and an entire musical ensemble will fall down and worship the golden statue. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These pay no heed to you, O king. They do not serve your gods, and they do not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious in rage and commanded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to present themselves. So they came before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, and entire musical ensemble to fall down and worship the statue that I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God 
who will deliver you out of my hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answer the king. O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnaces heated up seven times more than was customary, and he ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. So the men were bound, still wearing their tunics, their trousers, their hats, their other garments, and they were thrown into the furnace of blazing fire because the command, king's command was urgent and the furnace was so overheated, the raging flames killed the men who lifted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But the three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose up quickly. He said to his counselor, was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? True, O king. But I see four men, unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire, and the satraps, and the prefects, and the governors, and the king's counselor gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their tunics were not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any God except their own God. Therefore, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that utters blasphemy against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins. For there is no other God who is able to deliver in this way the word of the Lord. A reading from Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. 
We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John.
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but all rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scriptures, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping. Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting there where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This service that began on Maundy Thursday and continued through Good Friday and comes to its conclusion today takes us through what's called the Paschal Mystery. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. It's called a mystery in part because of the paradox and contrasts by which God shows mercy and great love for all people. Jesus did not remain in the tomb. He is risen. He has returned to God. Such is the saving power of God's love. We have heard of that tremendous and creative, life-giving love throughout the Bible from the beginning. God created the world from chaos. God created light when all was darkness. God created life, culminating in people, created male and female in God's image. The Gospel of John draws parallels between the creation and the new creation that begins with the resurrection. Throughout the Bible, God freely gave blessings and a future in spite of what might seem overwhelming obstacles. We read about Abraham. We're never told why God chose him and Sarah to go out from their home to a place that God will show. It was pure grace. Today's story is one of several that show Abraham's complete trust in God. Martin Luther has this to say about this text. In his lectures on Genesis, he says, faith has the power to kill death. He was suggesting that Abraham had such trust in God that no matter what happens, he expects Isaac will live. 
That's sort of like his trust in God's promise of a son when he and Sarah were much too old for that. And God reaffirms that Abraham and Sarah's descendants will be blessings to the whole world. When God seems to be asking the impossible, we can still trust that God's love will prevail. One of the most glorious acts of God for the chosen people is freedom from slavery in Egypt and the gift of the promised land. There was no way they could free themselves. Pharaoh had a mighty army, but God could, and God did. Later, when the people are faithless and end up in exile in Babylon, God's love still sets them free. The people are completely hopeless. Even the glorious temple built by Solomon has been completely destroyed. It would be easy to conclude that God had abandoned them. And then Ezekiel had that vision of dry bones. How foolish it seems from a human point of view to prophesy to bones or to the wind. But when God's word is spoken, it's effective. The bones come alive and the vision came true. The people did return to their homeland. The reading from Daniel isn't the only one in the Bible to foreshadow resurrection when there's life after something deadly. There's also the story of Job, remember, who says from the depths of suffering and loss, I know that my Redeemer lives. Again and again in the Bible, we see God's power to bring people through disasters to new life. With God, there's always hope. There is mercy and steadfast love that endures forever to all generations. These truths stretch our imagination. It was the same for the first disciples. Imagine being with them when Mary bursts in the room and exclaims, I have seen the Lord. How do you suppose you'd react? How do you suppose they reacted? They had been with Jesus. They had heard the things that he taught and seen what he had done over all that time. They were in the best position to understand that he is risen. And still it took them some time to come to believe that that is what had happened. At first, it was only clear where Jesus wasn't. He wasn't in the tomb. And then it began to be clear where Jesus was, alive, risen. It was improbable, completely impossible. And yet now, stop to think of it, Jesus had told them all along that he would be killed and that he would rise again. Resurrection, resurrection from death is about the most mind-boggling, awe-inspiring good news that's possible. Maybe that's why, even though it's such good news, it has often been hard to believe immediately. And that's not surprising when we consider God's ways are far beyond our human limitations. Actually, it might help us believe the witness of those disciples when we realized how they struggled to faith, to understand. Resurrection is so impossible. And yet, it happened. It never crosses her mind until she hears Jesus call her name, and then she finally recognizes him. To think that at first, when she saw him, she thought he was a gardener. Now she knows. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Did you notice the message that Jesus gave Mary to tell the disciples? He didn't go say, go tell them that I am risen. No, he said, go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Notice some important good news here. Jesus is going to God. That shows clearly that he is the Savior God promised. He is the Son of God. Now he's in a new life but you will be not limited to one physical space. Now he continues to be with his disciples without that limitation of a physical body. Just as he promised, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with his disciples after he left them. Now he would be with them and with us in spirit and not in appearances. We receive that spirit with the promises of baptism. 
The Gospel of John tells us that Jesus came so that people could become children of God, born of God, who won't perish, who will have eternal life. These gifts come through baptism. The old sinful self is drowned. The Apostle Paul puts it dramatically. In baptism, we're united with Christ in a death like his. The old self is crucified and buried. And that also means unity with him in a resurrection like his. It gives new life in him. Baptism is a new birth into the whole new creation that began when Jesus rose from death to life. The German theologian Jürgen Moltmann reminds us that the resurrection hope has to do with the fact that this mortal life is now going to be different. Resurrection is not just about the promise of a better world in the hereafter, it is energy for a rebirth of this life. The hope is focused on the redemption of this world. In the spirit, resurrection is not merely expected, it is already experienced. These words from Moltmann remind us that in baptism, our new life in Christ begins now. We are forgiven, no longer enslaved to sin. We are brought into a community of sisters and brothers in Christ that is global and also extends through time. We are united with others who trust God's love through Jesus. Did you notice that Jesus told Mary, go to my brothers and tell them? Jesus had called them disciples and then friends and now brothers and sisters, his brothers and sisters. As we consider, consider the meaning of resurrection, we come to experience his presence with us. That encounter can happen in many ways. Recall some of the ways that Jesus told his disciples that whenever anyone does good in his name, it is as though we do it to him. That he would abide in us and we in him. That those who believe would experience his peace, peace beyond what the world can give. That people will know that we are his disciples by our love when we love as he first loved us and that he will always be with us to the end of time. From the first Easter on, people have come to know Jesus in these very ways. Indeed, sometimes the mystery and wonder of resurrection don't lead to confusion, but to deeper faith. We don't have to understand completely, to believe and to trust. Trusting God, we find God's free gift of new life day by day. Indeed, in the very times of greatest troubles in life, believing that Christ is risen, Christians have found comfort, courage, hope, peace, love, joy, so many blessings to carry us through. We come to know Jesus is alive and is calling us by name. Jesus is calling you and me to be his disciples and to be involved in God's kingdom, living under God's rule. As we believe, we experience it his inspiration in our living, his call to mission, his encouragement as we seek to follow him, his comfort, and above all, his love. Yes, there is still evil in our world as we know, and sin, and death, but now everything is different because God's greater power won the victory on that first Easter day. Because of Easter, we can gladly face anything and do so with hope and with courage with the expectation that God's ways for new life will win out. Sometimes the new possibilities for goodness come quickly, even unexpectedly. Other times it seems it will only be at the end that the victory is won. But either way, because Jesus is risen, being on the side of life is being on the winning side. No wonder we celebrate at Easter, praising God with alleluias. We are in awe at the goodness of God's love and at God's power for life over death. We look to the future with confident hope because Jesus has won the victory of life and goodness over death and sin. We look forward to experience, experiencing his presence with us again and again and his powerful life-giving blessings such as his peace. May it keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
We continue now with an affirmation of our baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in this community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of the world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, God's, God's only, only Son, Son of God. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, Christ died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. dead. On the third day, he rose, he rose again. again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I do, and, and I ask God, God to help and guide me. me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and, and we, we ask, ask God to help and guide, and guide us. us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Washed and renewed in the mercy of God that endures forever, we pray this night for the church, the world, and all creation. You bring us from death to life with Christ. Fill and enlighten the newly baptized. Enliven all the baptized, so that your church may be a sign of resurrection in the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. At creation you brought forth order and life. Bring life anew to all creation, sky, earth, and seas, sun, moon, and stars, plants and animals. Teach us to treasure and defend what you have declared to be good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As you delivered your people, deliver all from bondage. Bring an end to war and brutality. Raise up leaders who listen for wisdom's voice. Cause righteousness to spring up among the nations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your power extends to the depths of the grave. Bring hope and peace to all who are in the depths of sorrow or the fires of suffering. Heal all who are sick and comfort the grieving, especially all afflicted with the coronavirus and all we name here before you.
Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the first light of dawn, Jesus' resurrection was revealed. Guard all who keep vigil in the night, tending to the sick or ensuring public safety, working or worrying. As they await the morning, may hope dawn upon them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You drew the amazed, the terrified, and the weeping to the empty tomb. Gather us with your people of all times and places to wonder at your power and rejoice in your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. To you, living God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one with whom we have been raised to new life, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of Christ's peace. We give thanks for your offering and support of mission and ministry through Grace Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings as you have raised us to new life in Christ. Give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We remember, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart trust its worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm 
again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Be to God. to love.